Oh, I'm sorry, James. I know what that feels like when you've been trying to track an animal and all of a sudden you're sort of pipped at the post in terms of finding them. I know exactly what it feels like. And to be fair, those tracks were confusing. On the one road, they were going in the complete opposite direction to where these lions are, so they must have been more than two males on Juma last night. I guess the other male moved off further towards the east. But there we go. Could there be a more spectacular sight than two male lions in this glorious golden light? And just off the top of my head, definitely looks as though Mfumo is there. And my next guess would be to say that this is Tinio that we're looking at. I haven't had a chance to closely look at his face. The sun is right in my eyes. Hello, boy. That looks like him, does it not? Is he giving himself a thorough paw cleaning? So these are our resident dominant males, the Birmingham boys, or two of them. There's actually four of them in total. And between the four of them, once five, very sadly, but between the four of them, they've established themselves an absolutely massive territory that encompasses the whole of Juma, most of Arethusa, into Buffel's Hook. Just listening to the go away birds, sorry. Alarm calling. Yes, encompasses right down to Cheetah Plains, sometimes into Marla Marla, the whole of Torchwood. So they really do have an absolutely massive territory. They have fathered cubs. Oh dear boy, that's not very convenient at all. Sorry everybody, you'll just have to put up with not being able to see their faces for now. They have fathered several sets of cubs, both by the Nkuhumas and by the Styx lions. And it is always wonderful to encounter them. It's been a joy to watch them grow into their various fatherly roles as they have. And also just watch them fill out. Their manes getting bigger and darkening. All in all, they've become a true force to be reckoned with in this particular area. The last time I saw these two, they were starving hungry. They don't look as hungry as they did then. I mean, they really were looking thin-bellied, their hips were sticking out. They just looked in need of a very good meal. And that, that belly looks much fuller than when I last saw them. Alright, this is a very tricky position. I wonder, I'm just trying to see, sorry, there's my head, I'm getting my head in the way. I'm just trying to see whether or not we can actually try and find a different position to view them by. But unfortunately, it might be a little bit tricky. There's a quarry bush in the way. And if I drive... Hmm. Boys, it's a very, very inconvenient position for you to be in. They found themselves the only patch of shade right outside Galago Pan. Now, don't forget to send through your questions on the subject of these lions, or, or anything else, I guess, on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. I think the only thing I can try and do is shuffle forward a little bit because this view is not particularly good hold on let me think about this now that oh hold on this gentleman appears to want to move that'll make life easier let's just see which way he's going backwards forwards And welcome to Caro, while we look at our Birmingham boys. Caro, you want to know whether or not these are brothers or cousins. I'm actually not sure about the direct relationship between Mfumo and Tinio. It would be terribly tragic if we had a, a bumper bashing in a lion sighting. Let me just move a bit further back. Oh. I'm actually not sure. I know they come from the same pride. The thing about male lions and the way in which they form coalitions is they could be brothers, they could be cousins. In this case, we know that they're directly related to each other, but that isn't always the case. Cheers, guys. Morning. Morning. How are you? Good. Thanks. Cheers. There we go. Problem solved. What was I talking about? Oh, yes. So male lions... Let's get into position and we can we can watch them. When a male lion leaves a pride with several male lions of, hello boy, of his own age, he's actually got a ready-made coalition. 
and they could be cousins, they could be brothers. As you know, generally speaking, lionesses will synchronize their estrus cycles so as to produce several litters of cubs at once that they will then allosuckle. So the cubs are as close as can be, and if you've got a collection of male cubs, <coughs> excuse me, they could be siblings and they could be cousins, they'll move out together once they reach the appropriate age. However, if it is one lone male lion, as was the case with the Nkuhuma male junior, and they leave home, they will quite happily form a coalition with another young lone male, or a couple of young lone males. Lions are not strict about being related to the coalition members that they're in a coalition with. And that's because everybody gets a chance to mate. So the advantage of numbers outweighs the desperate desire to pass on one's own genetics over everybody else. But we know that the Birmingham boys are related. Those of you who perhaps have dug into their history a little bit, perhaps you can tell me... <coughs> Sorry, I think I swallowed a fly. Or a bug of some kind. Maybe you can let me know whether or not they are brothers or if they're cousins. For some reason, I have a feeling that they are cousins. Because I actually think there's a slight age difference between the two of them. But I'm not 100% sure on that. They're all roughly the same age, and Sugul was the eldest when the, well, obviously he's still the eldest, that doesn't change, but he's the eldest of them, and I think he's probably about six months older than the rest of them. So it's in Sugu, Nena, Mfumo, and Tinyo. They seem to be sleeping off full bellies. I wonder what they've been eating. They've definitely got a very, very round bellies indeed. <coughs> sure. Big sigh from our male lions. And it's a pity that we only found them <coughs> that we only found them at this time of the morning because it's starting to heat up significantly. The cloud cover that we started with has all but vanished, which means this is probably what they're going to do for the rest of the morning. Have a jolly good snooze. I did see an Inyala walking in this direction, so you never know. There's the possibility of an animal coming to have a drink at Galago Pan and getting ambushed by them, but it seems relatively unlikely because once a male lion goes to sleep, that's generally the way that they spend their day. You can see them rapidly panting. Hmm. Very, very good question. Now, VJ would like to know what my favorite moment or most memorable sighting is with these male lions. And I'm humming about it because I've actually had many moments with these lions that have been truly spectacular. Now, I can't, I'm struggling to pick just one. There was, I have to say that a lot of the sightings when these boys came in were truly spectacular in the sense that they were very, very active all of the time. There was lots of roaring going on. Oh, I think one of my favorite sightings was when they came in and chased the Inkohumas off a buffalo kill. And then they didn't even feed off it, but there was so much roaring around. And they were so, in those days, now they've got this very relaxed, comfortable, dominant male lion feeling about them. But in those days, everywhere they went, they trotted in a way that suggested massive levels of testosterone. I don't know how else to tell you this, but essentially when a male coalition takes over a territory, they are pumped full of testosterone and you could see it in their body language. They had something rough and tumble and ready to fight about them. So I think those are probably some of my most memorable sightings with them. There was also the fight that the Inkohumas had that I was with Viam for uh, during a school drive, funnily enough. There was a massive fight between, I think it was Tinyo and Mfumo, over one of the lionesses, but the lionesses were so angry that they joined in because they had the cubs to protect, and it turned into utter chaos. And the noise and the roaring and all of that that comes together, it's awe-inspiring. And then I've got one more 
favorite, absolutely favorite sighting. It involves the Nkuhumas as well, but these boys were there and they were kind of the instigators of it. It was when we were doing the, the Mara, the first Mara week where James was in the Mara for a week and we were doing the late, late night drives with the, <coughs> the infrared. And Dave and I were sitting in complete pitch, pitch blackness. The only way that I knew there were lions walking past me was I could hear of their feet touching the ground next to me. Could not see a thing. The only thing I could see was what the camera was looking at on my monitor. And all of a sudden, these boys started to roar and it was back in the day when all four of them were on, it was one of the last times I saw all four of them on Juma. And they were roaring away and it was just the most spectacular moment because the boys started to roar and then the ladies joined in and then the cubs joined in and there was just this cacophony of lion roars all around us and it, the entire vehicle was shaking with the power of the noise that they were making and I don't think I've ever had that many lions around me roaring I've seen all five of them roar together on quarantine that was also spectacular oh dear now I'm going now I'm giving you a list of memorable memories but I can't help it we've just had so many magic moments with them but all of them roaring around us and the cubs, their cubs, joining in. It was spectacular. Truly, truly spectacular. There was another time where, as I said, on quarantine, all five of them roaring around us when they first took over. We went out after the drive had finished. It was back when Scrapper or Tokolosh was still alive. And I remember distinctly everybody on the back of the vehicle going into a sort of awed and hushed silence when these lions roared around us. All five boys calling together. It's a spectacular experience.